Christchurch, we head south through Omaru, New Zealand's steampunk capital, which, legend has it, became such due to the adaptation of a bear mug by local jeweller, Ian Clark. We end up in the popular student city of Dunedin, home of the University of Otago, a bucket load of Scottish ancestry and of course some amazing producers of great kiwi beer. So we check out the environmentally responsible Green Man Brewery. How's it going? How are you? Good to see you. Good, thanks. Uh, so I'm Jeremy, I'm the general manager of Green Man. This is Enrico, the German brewmaster. And uh, so we're a uh, certified organic craft brewery in Dunedin. Uh, we do about 16 different styles throughout the, uh, throughout the course of a year. We, we do um, lots of seasonal different ones and, and change them around. Plus, you know, every few months we're bringing out something new. So um, I guess uh, occasionally we'll be cattling some that we won't redo and all the rest are off the, off the list. But yeah. So part of this project, we want to have an end result where we come up with a beer that's uh, a collaborative beer with all the craft brewers that we meet. Yep. And I'm um, looking for what you think is probably uniquely what sums up Green Man and we could bring it on board as an idea to, to include in the collaboration. I mean, we definitely want to be involved. I mean, I, I, I get off on, you know, the marketing and the, um, the, the branding and the, you know, the labels and the designs. And, yeah, well, and that's, that's, that's sort of part of the collaboration to us, well. building yeah. that brand and, and what it looks like. We head inside to check out the brewery and their bottle recycling facility. Uh, in here we've got our IPA, and in the other one we've got our um, premium pilsner, you can have a look if you like. So in this tank we've got our premium pilsner, it's about two days into fermentation. So um, what's your uh, batch size here? Between 1000 and 1500 litres, depends on the style. So you guys are also um, known for your Rattler that you made? We don't like to call it Rattler. All <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> you're saying you couldn't name a beer after the style that you actually brewed? Correct. Because um, a particular brewery owns a trademark for a, a style. It's like trademarking lager or something. Rubbish. Cyclist, actually the chairman for this is Rattler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the style is just... A mix lager and lemonade, half half, a low alcohol drink, that's why this is, is a red lot. Green Man have picked up some sustainability awards for their bottle recycling initiative. Probably one of the only ones in the in the country that is of its size and all the rest. Uh, we imported it from Germany as long as well with the uh, the uh, the filling, capping and labelling machines. And so we have a, a good little setup up through next door so we can package um, as much as we need to, as long as we've got the beer. So what kind of um, percentage of bottles do you get back? We reuse about 20, yeah, 20 to 30 wow, percent. That's, more and that's more really more. high. Yeah. It is voluntary, you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Where there's actually a separate company, yeah. uh, and it actually runs um, the, the bottle uh, collection and, and washing and everything. They're called Smart Bottles, and they have collection points around the South Island where they, they collect the bottles up and bring them back to us. We actually pay the same price um, from bottles from them as we do for a new bottle. People really like the whole idea of um, they, they pack up their little bag, they come down, they drop off four bottles, they get four more, and they come back and get washed and reused. Everything that we can't wash and reuse gets recycled. Uh, we do the same thing with our packaging in terms of our boxes and all the rest. Of a lot of them, you know, they'll be crossed out, it's been reboxed three or four times, sort of thing. And yeah. when it gets to a state where we can't reuse it, then, you know, uh, it gets recycled as well. The brewery has a great range of beers, producing New Zealand's strongest beer, experimenting with wood ageing and making a true style German crystal wheat beer. Really? Is it, New Zealand's the only one? I think, I think this is only the Actually, only crystal. Right. Yeah, yeah, not anymore, because De De Monteith's did one back in 2002, but just limited release, so I think it's the last one I've heard it's of. It's quite a common style in Germany, the crystal yeah. wise, because um, normally wheat beer is with a lot of yeast, it's like a meal, but I like it more in the summer. And be honest, when I have so much yeast, I then, then I cannot eat anything. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I filter the wheat beer, and this makes us that easy for the summer, and you still can enjoy a meal or whatever. Yeah, yeah, nice. You know, that's that, a really good example of a. It's great. You need some vice first with it. Yeah, that's eleven o'clock. <laughs> Sausages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The strong and the carrot, they are planting beers from the whiskey book. Ah, okay. You know? okay. Means so the whiskey bog and the best bitter is the strong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we're blending the alcohol level down. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, and so the kelp and the and the dark malt, but don't have it here. Yeah, is yeah. the, uh, the dark malt and the whiskey box is the kelp. Ah, okay, makes this sense. makes the malt yeah. flavor in here, and this makes a little bit the hoppy flavor in the strong. Uh, it's, we kind of look at it's like like a restaurant sort of thing. I mean, you've got twenty ingredients, and you can make them into seven eight different sort of things and stuff. So our our tequila beer, for instance, is our premium pilsner with a dash of tequila and a dash of lime in it. So we get two beers out of one sort of thing. And a lot of our beers are actually quite simple beers, but they're actually com quite complex once you start getting into them a little bit more and, you, and stuff like that. So I'm getting some banoffee pie on the nose. Mm. Banoffee pie? Yeah, it's sort of banana and toffee. And, I used to yeah. do a banoffee pie at my restaurant with a chili caramel sauce. Oh yeah, yeah. I want one now. Wow, that sounds <laughs> great. <laughs> We all know how much Southlanders like to say purple worms, so we go and check out the extremely passionate Vicky Purple, founder of Beltane Bears, and meet Tom the Pom Jones, who heads up bear education company Crafty Bears. Been a home brewer for many years, uh, came to New Zealand, couldn't find the right ingredients, uh, had a completely different profession altogether. And when I went to a small brewer that was being set up here in Dunedin, uh, I tried to get some ingredients and he said, oh, there's a young fella called Richard Emerson who sets up a new brewery on Grange Street. So I said, you know, do you need a hand? You know, everyone volunteers for working in a brewery, don't they? So, um, so that's what I did, you know, I kind of volunteered, but they insisted on paying me, you know? So I thought, mm, he's gonna win here. And then in 2004, um, I decided that I'd like to set up my own brewery with an organic focus, with a, 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 like a green initiative and a bottle reuse. So I set up, I established Green Man Brewery with the help of a few other investors. And then uh, last year, I decided that the industry needed a little bit more help in education and tastings and, and just getting the word out there basically to the general population. So I set up a company, a company called Crafty Beers. Sort of stepping back a bit, I know we all get excited about what we're doing. Maybe just um, explain, because sort of, I know you're doing a whole bunch of different things around craft beer and just sort of, sort of fill in to Kelly what, um, what you are doing and sort of all the different projects you've got going on. I decided, you know, about a year ago that um, if you can't beat them, join them. So that's when I decided that I really wanted to target the female market. Women are really now appreciating beer and that's why I started my Beltane Beers and of course I contract, contract so broke, that's my own brand, um, which is more specifically targeted at the female palate and um, there's a whole philosophy behind that as well. and. Um, and we're quite pleased with our, with our first beer that came out, which is called Beltane Maiden. We've got a silver moon. And I'm um, really enjoying the, the camaraderie and the family that is the craft beer industry. We're keen as to get their thoughts on the collaboration beer we've planned. Mine's more a philosophy, I think, you know, what you're trying to do, Luke. I mean, even what this means is we're all interconnected and intertwined. At any given moment in your life, you are the sum total of your experiences. You know, the philosophy behind this brew is actually that um, all of those lived experiences of all the points in time, at that point in time is all those experiences in one. So it's the essence of, of what your whole trip's been about. So maybe you want to think about that sort of philosophy behind... New Zealand um, in their glass, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the yeah. essence. And that sort of eternity thing with, with Māori, there's the pikorua, which, yes. is, which is something, I mean, that's something that just came to mind, which is pretty New Zealand as well, you know, and that's it's an organic idea, isn't it? So yeah, it's really cool. I like it. Tomorrow's a big day for driving. We've got to get down to Invercargill by noon. Okay. Just a couple of hours there. Because this guy's a pretty key player for um Yeah, for craft beer. For craft beer. We've got Yeasty Boys and Golden Ticket and Roger Pink and obviously the Invercargill Bears. And head back to Queenstown. And then we're gonna crank it right up to the Franz Joseph. Stay the night by the glacier. Awesome. And then moving on. So the big hall <laughs> over the hills. The bear gods will be with us. <laughs> 